What is up guys? We are playing the Marvel Champion Sinister Motives Expert Campaign, starting off with Scenario 1, Sandman on Expert Mode with Peter Parker Spider-Man. So let's go ahead and get the villain set up. So for the uh, setup instructions here, in the encounter deck we have Sandman, City in Chaos, Down to Earth, and the st standard sets and also the expert sets as well. Already shuffled into the encounter deck. And then, uh, let's see, so we're going to get Sandman set up first. So with the main scheme says, search and counter for City Streets environment, which we have right here. We're going to put that into play. Place four sand counters on it. So we're going to put four sand counters on the City Streets. And then we're going to advance this to stage 1B, which starts off with two threat. And it says here, if it hits nine, then we lose the game. And after an acceleration token is placed on the scheme, do you three indirect damage to the first player. Okay, and then with Sandman's web review, it says to resolve the Surging Sands ability on city streets. Uh, let's go ahead and shuffle up the encounter deck again. Okay, so resolve the Surging Sands ability on city streets. So special here is to place one sand counter on here. And then discard cards on the top of the encounter deck equal to the number of sand counters here. So there's five sand counters, so we know five cards off of the encounter deck. So one two, three, four, five. All right. All right, we did his one reviewed and then I think we are good with that. Okay, so we already have his hit points set up at 18 and Peter Parker has 10 hit points to start off. And for the campaign setup now, after we got the villain set up, put the public outcry environment into play. So that's gonna be this card right here. And since we are doing the uh, expert campaign, we're gonna have the expert mode only side face up with the hazard icon. So we're just going to put this environment right here next to the city streets environment. And then uh, this has a victory one. It comes in with three nor variety counters. And then after a minion or side scheme is defeated, remove one nor variety counter from here. And then we get all three off that we can defeat this environment. Okay. And then let's see what else we got. Shuffle the smear campaign treachery into the encounter deck. So that's going to be this treachery card right here. And then we're just going to shuffle this into the encounter deck now. And we do that, the campaign setup, after we do the, uh, the setup for the villain. So the milling from the city streets will not have been able to mill um, that card, the smear campaign treachery that we now have in the encounter deck. All right. And then let's see here. Choose one camp, uh, campaign community service side scheme at random. Shuffle that side scheme into the encounter deck. So we have the community service side schemes right here. Uh, we're going to put one two, three, four, five, and we're going to roll it with the dice to get one randomly. If we get a six, we will re-roll. So let's see what we got here. We got a one, so it's going to be a Rubble Rescue. We're going to shuffle this into the encounter deck as well. Let's set these guys aside. More shuffling. And then for the uh, expert campaign only, it says to place two additional sand counters on the city streets environment. Resolve the Surging Sands ability. Oh, okay. So we put two more counters on here. So it's going to go from, what is that? Five to seven. And then we resolve the Surging Sands ability again, I believe. Yeah, so now we're going to place one sand counter on here. And this card across the top of the counter equal to the number of sand counters on here. So it's going to be eight now. We're going to mill eight cards. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. And we lost our obligation as well. All right, so I believe that is it with all the setup there. Um, let me see. We've got the campaign thing. Okay. All right, I think that is it. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we already have the encounter deck shuffled up. We're going to shuffle up our player deck here. And then we're going to draw up to our hand size of six in our ego. All right. Okay, so we got some pretty good cards here on our starting hand. Uh, are we okay to get started? I feel like I'm missing something. No, I think I got everything. Okay, so um, let's see. We definitely want to keep Nick Fury. We want the mansion and we want the power in all of us as our double resource. Let's Morgan discard these three cards and then draw three more. One, two, and let me just check the campaign setup one more time. I 
I thought that we we're supposed to get one of these um, these uh, shield techs here, but maybe we don't get one yet until uh, the next scenario, it seems like. Um, let me see. Choose. Yeah, I don't think we have any victory points or anything here, right? Two, three, because we have to get one to get that, I believe. Um, and right now we're at zero, so we don't have this star at the uh, first thing. All right, so I, I believe we don't we don't have anything. Okay, so let's go ahead, go ahead and get started. Um, so we did our mulligans already, um, and let's go ahead and start. So I've been saying that for a while. Let's go ahead and use this right here as four resources when paying for a basic card because the power in all of us is a double. So we can play Nick Fury. When Nick Fury enters play, choose one. We're going to pick the one and draw three cards. So one, two, three. Okay, and then let's see. I think, what do we want to do here? We want to... Do we want to get Maria Hill down? Or do we want to... Yeah, I think we want Maria Hill. Okay, let's use Peter Parker Scientist to generate a mental resource. This would be a second resource, so we can play Maria Hill. This says, after Maria Hill enters play, each player draws a card, so we're going to draw another card here. We've got the Enhanced Spider Sense. We play Quinn Care. I think we play Avengers Mansion here. So let's go ahead and use this as four resources so we can play Avengers Mansion. And we can exhaust Avengers Mansion so we can draw a card. Turn to a swing web kick. Uh, ooh, yeah, this is pretty nasty here. Let's go ahead and flip over here to Hero Form. And we want to get the Surging Sands down. So there's a Hero Action here. Exhaust the character you control, remove Sand Counters here equal to that character's attack limit once per round per player. So let's go ahead and exhaust Spider Man. And we're going to remove two Sand Counters on here because we have two attack. So we're going to drop this down to six. Then, uh, what are we doing? We're going to have Maria Hill Thor for two for the main scheme. Clear that off. Should take a consequence of damage. Nick Fury is going to swing for two at Sandman. I'll bring him from 18 down to 16. Nick will take a consequence of damage. That's going to end our turn. Let's ready back up. Let's discard the swing web kick and draw back up to our hand size here of five in hero four. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So Sandman's turn is going to add one. To the main scheme then he's going to attack us here uh let's see his force interrupt says when salmon attacks you if that attack uh de or that attack deals indirect damage if your identity takes any amount of damage from that attack resolve the surging sensibility on city streets okay so if he's gonna hit us here with a base of three we don't have a backflip um so force interrupt okay it's gonna be indirect damage this will be his boost card then we're gonna trigger our uh, interrupt spider sense when a villain initiates an attack against you, draw one card. So we can draw a card here. Got into a resource. Uh, let's go ahead and defend this attack here. And then this would be his boost card. So it's going to be two plus three. So it's going to be five damage, but it's indirect damage. So we can choose how to displace it uh, however we want. Let's put three on Peter Parker's Spider-Man. And then two on Nick Fury. So that will knock Nick Fury out. And the three damage, we defended all of it with a uh, basic defense here. So we did not take any uh, damage. So we don't have to uh, resolve the surging sensibility on the city streets here. Then we get a face on encounter card, which is volunteer work. You cannot thwart the scheme, coming in with three threat. After you actually, we can spend two resources of any type to remove threat from the scheme equal to your alter ego's recovery. If your Denny has a civilian trait, we can draw a card. And we don't have the civilian trait in uh, for a Peter Parker Spider-Man. Okay, so that's going to end... Oh, wait, wait. I messed up. So we have a hazard icon here. So we should get, we should have dealt ourselves two encounter cards here. So volunteer work and this card right here. And we review them now. So we review the volunteer work and now we review our other encounter card, which is Dirt Trap. So another side scheme. This says one defeat, resolve the certain sensibility on city streets and resolve again when we defeat this. And that's gonna come with one threat and a crisis. Okay. So it's back to our turn here. Let's see, do we have any, we don't have any allies here. Let's exhaust Avengers Mansion so we can draw a card. Gotta suit up. Unfortunately, this is a hero action. So if we suit up into a moon girl, then we can't trigger the effects of the city streets, which I want to do. Uh, see, there's no way to get rid of the public aqua right now. I don't think I want to mill yet. Let's see, volunteer work right here. Uh, we can spend two resources of any type to remove threat from this scheme. We can do three and clear this off right away. Uh, let's see. Should I have Maria Hill do this action here? 
uh, we can't play anyone right now. We could also wrap a response, Mario. No, I don't think that's going to be a play. All right, we have to. We don't need her Thorin right now. So let's go ahead and use this hero action. Exhaust the character you control, Maria Hill. And rem uh, remove Sand Counters from here equal to that character's attack. So she has one attack. We're going to remove one Sand Counter from her. So this drops from six down to uh, five. All right. Then we are going to flip down to Ultra Eagle here. And then we want to play Suit Up. So let's use. Then we use this as. Or do we play the Ingenuity? No, we gotta get Moon Girl first. So this would be two resources here. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and use our Scientist before I forget. So Scientist is gonna generate a mental resource. This would be a second resource, so it can play Suit Up. This says Ultra Eagle Action. Search your deck and discard pile for an ally and an upgrade that can be attached to the ally, add them to your hand. So we're gonna look through our uh, deck here for an ally, which we're gonna pick Moon Girl. And an upgrade that can be attached to her is gonna be our Clarity of Purpose here. So one cost upgrade you can attach to a friendly character, which Moon Girl uh, qualifies as. And then we're going to shuffle up our deck here. Okay. And then uh, that will resolve the suit up. And then for Moon Girl, we're going to play her here. We're going to use Clarity of Purpose and the Power in All of Us, which is a double in pain for a basic card. We're going to have the wilds here be mental resources. So three mental resources so we can play Moon Girl. Moon Girl says play only if your identity has a champion or genius trait. We do have the genius trait here in Alter Eagle. After you play Moon Girl from your hand, draw one card for each mental resource you use to pay for. We use three, so we're drawing three cards. One, two, three. Okay, I think we want to get rid of the volunteer work right away. I think I want to play the Ingenuity here as well. And then we don't necessarily need Aunt May right now. Play rep response, play Ingenuity. Yeah, that will work. Okay, so we're going to use this as a double resource. So we can play Ingenuity. Play only if your identity has a genius trait, which we do have in Arch Eagle. And we're going to use this as two resources so it can play Rapid Response. This is a two cost upgrade. As a hero response, when an ally you control the feet, we can discard Rapid Response, put the ally into play from your discard pile, and deal one damage to it. Then we're going to use this Arch Eagle action here. Spend two resources of any type. So Ingenuity is going to exhaust and generate a mental resource. This will be a second resource here. So we can uh, remove threat from the scheme equal to your Arch Eagle's recovery, which is three. So we can take three threat off of this scheme. Clearing that off. And then uh, we don't get to draw a card because we don't have the civilian trait. But we uh, defeated this side scheme here. Yeah, so this side scheme is gone. And then right here for the public outcry, it says, after a minion or side scheme is defeated, remove one notoriety counter from here. So we take one off. And we get two more off, then we can get rid of that hazard icon. So one side scheme left here. And then, uh, ooh, do we just have Moon Girl throw it out? I think we do. Uh, okay, Moon Girl is going to throw for two from the dark trap here and clear off this side scheme. She would take two consequential damage for thwarting. And this says, when defeat, resolve the story and ability on city streets and resolve it again. again. So we're going to resolve this twice. So place one sand counter here. This goes up to six. And then discard cards top and counter equal to number of sand counters. So six cards going down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then resolve it again with the dirt trap here. So we place another sand counter so up to seven. And resolve it again. So uh, milling seven cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that is nasty. Okay, so we defeated this side scheme here, and then because of that, we can take another no right counter off of here because a side scheme was defeated. So we can take that off. All right. We already gave Moon Girl her consequential damage, and then I think that is it. Yeah. So that's gonna end our turn. Let's ready back up. We're going to keep the uh, Aunt May in our hand, draw back up to six, and hope we can get a min or a side skin to knock out here. We actually didn't get a second copy of uh, of our um, suit up, so we have two more left in the deck, and I'm hoping we can get it with Avengers Mansion. So it is Sandman's turn. He's going to add one to this main scheme. It goes up to two. Then uh, he's going to scheme with a base of one plus a boost card here of one, so a scheme for a total of two. This will go from two up to four. Then it's going to deal us two face down counter cards because of the hazard icon from the public outcry. First encounter card is in advance, so he's going to scheme again with the base of one plus a boost card of one. So it's going to be a total of two again. This will go from four up to six. And our last encounter card is Sand Clone. Okay, 
So x is equal to number of city counts on city streets. Uh, city streets is here. So he has seven attack right now. And when he's defeated, we have to resolve certain stands ability on city streets, which uh, is probably going to be soon. So it is back to our turn. Uh, let's exhaust the vegetation so we can draw a card. Drew into Black Cat. I think she would discard what we want. Uh, we could. No, we can't trigger the rapper response here. Okay, I think. I think what we do is we actually get Professor X down. And then we can. Oh, and we play Spire Tracer. Okay, let's go ahead and use Scientist to generate a mental resource. So we can play our Spire Tracer, attach it to a minion. We're going to put it on the same clone here, who has the three hit points. When the attached minion is defeated with Spire Tracer, we can remove three threat from a scheme. Then, is there any other reason to stay here? Yeah, we're going to flip over here to Hero Form. And then we're going to, uh, let's see. Let's use Black Cat as a resource to play Aunt May. And then we're going to use this as we could. No, it's okay. I don't think we need to engineer this turn. This would be three resources, so it can play Professor X. When Professor X enters play, choose one. We pick the one to confuse the villain, so we can confuse Sam in here. All right. Next, we need to knock out the Sand clone. Uh, let's see. If we do that, and then Professor X can thwart. And then, okay. So let's use this hero action here. Exhaust a character you control, exhausting Moon Girl, and then remove sand counts from here equal to that character's attack. So two attacks. We're going to take two sand counts off here. This will drop down from seven to five. And then she doesn't take consequential consequ consequ damage for the hero action here. Spider Man's going to swing for two at the sand clone. Maria Hill swings for one, knocks out the sand clone. Then we trigger the Spire Tracer because the minion was defeated. We can remove three threat from a scheme. Uh, that will drop this from six down to three. And then uh, he has a one defeat effect. Resolve the Surging Saints ability on city streets. So we're going to place a Saint counter on here with a special. So this goes back up to six again. And then we're going to mill six cards from the encounter deck. This card cards from the top of the encounter equal to number of six. Yeah, so six cards here. And there's only five, so one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, same in decks out. So when that happens, we place an acceleration on the main scheme. Force response after an acceleration token is placed on this scheme. Do three indirect damage to the first player. So we're going to put two indirect, uh, or we're going to put one indirect on Professor X. And we're going to put uh, two on Spider-Man. So we draw from... 10 down to 8. I think we could have done it on Marie Hill, but uh, just in case, let's do that. So we did that, and then he decks us, so we shuffle up the encounter deck again here. Alright, so that was his first deck out, but I think we're getting a little bit under control. We just need to get City Streets down here. Alright, so we got that. Oh, and then whenever we defeated that minion here, with the response after main or side scheme is defeated, since we defeated uh, that same clone, we can remove another variety count from here and clear off the public outcry. So I should, I should have done that earlier, but I forgot to. And then whenever all three are gone, we can add this card to the victory display with the victory one. So it gets removed from the game and we get rid of the hazard icon finally. Okay, so we did that. And then Maria will take her consequential damage for attacking the same clone. So she gets discarded here. And then we're going to have Professor X go ahead and Thor for three from the main scheme, clearing that off. He will take a consequential damage. And then that's going to end our turn. We're going to keep back in our hand and ready everyone back up here. And draw back up to our hand size of five. We've got our Web of Life and Destiny combo. Okay. So Sandman's turn. He's going to add two to the main because of the acceleration. He's going to attack us. Spire sends trigger. So when the villain initiates an attack, we can draw a card. Two backflips here. Uh, well, it's going to be indirect. So he's hitting with a base of three. This would be his boost card. Two, so five damage. We're going to put all five on Peter Parker Spider Man and then play our backflip here. Zero cost event. When you take any amount of damage from the attack, prevent all the damage. So we're jumping out of the way, taking no damage. And then uh, since we took no damage, we don't have to trigger this thing at all. Uh, then we get our encounter card here. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah, so we get one face on encounter card now, which is caught off guard. This card, an upgrade or support control. If no cards were discarded, this card gains surge. 
So we have to lose a support or upgrade here. I think uh, can we just lose Aunt May here. I think we can lose Aunt May actually. We could also go for the rapid response. Don't know how much that's going to be useful. Let's actually discard the rapid response and keep Aunt May. We discard that as caught off guard, and then that's going to end the round. And Salmon's turn, Professor X says, if he's in play at the end of the round, we discard him. So he gets his card here as well. Okay, so it's back to our turn. We are going to... Let's exhaust Avengers Mage so we can draw a card first. We've got another suit up. Uh, do I want to play suit ups now? I don't know if I do. Uh, let's go ahead... Do we want to... Okay, let's go ahead and use this as a resource. So we can play the War of the Great Web. Attach the character with Spire and Let's get the Spire Man. We now gain the Web Warrior trait. And when Web Warrior Allies is played, we get plus one attack at the end of the phase. The Web of Life Death says, ignore this card's resource cost if your identity has a Web Warrior trait, which we do have with the War of the Great Web. So we can play this card for free. After Web Warrior Allies is played, we can choose a player. That player draws a card. Um, and then do we... Let's see. If we suit up here, if we use this to suit up, we can get Moon Girl and another card back. We play Moon Girl, it just decks us out. I don't know if there's any point to doing that. Uh, we might as well, I think. Okay, let's have Moon Girl floor for two from the main scheme, clearing that off. She would take Consequential Damage, she gets defeated. Then we're going to use this hero action, Exhaust the Carrier Control, Spider Man. We're going to remove two counters out there because we have two attacks. So this would drop this from six down to five again. Slowly trying to manage that. Then we're going to flip down to Arch Eagle and exhaust AMA to heal by four. That will bring us from eight back up to our full hit points of ten. And then we're going to use two resources to play Suit Up. Arch Eagle action, search your deck and this card out for an ally and a support or an upgrade that can be attached to the ally. So we're going to get Moon Girl again. And the upgrade that can be attached here is going to be our Clarity of Purpose. So we can add that to our hand again. That will resolve the Suit Up. We're going to use Scientist to generate a mental resource. Ingenuity generates a second mental resource. And Clarity of Purpose is a third mental resource to play Moon Girl again. Play only if your identity has a champion or genius trait, which we have in Archie Eagle. We play her, draw uh, one card for each mental resource use of paper. We use three. We're drawing three cards here, which decks us out. So we get a face down encounter card. And we're going to shuffle up the discard pile here after decking out. And I just realized, I think. I'm playing a 41 card deck right now. because I think I forgot to take out, make the call right here, um, but that is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and use this as a resource to play the Triskelion. It's a one cost support. Increase your ally limb by one. This allows you to control more than three allies. So we can now have four allies here. Moon Girl is gonna swing for two at Sandman and bring him from 16 down to 14. She will take two consequential damage. And then that's going to end our turn. Let's ready back up. And we're going to discard and make the call. And then draw back up to our hand size here of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 6. Okay. Alright, so Sandman's turn. He's going to add 2 to the main scheme because of the acceleration. He's going to scheme, but he's confused. So the activation does not go off. Then in counter face, he deals an encounter card. And we have 2 here. First one is volunteer work. So same thing again, you cannot throw the scheme coming in with three threat, and we can spend two resources of any type to uh, get rid of it. And then our last encounter card is a common criminal. Uh, he has surge, uh, spend a physical resource and do three damage to the common criminal. If it's defeated, then we can draw a card or remove three threat from the side scheme. So he surges into smear campaign. In X criminal, this card gains surge. When reviewed, if public outcry is in play, place two variety counters on it, and then remove this card from the game. Uh, it's not in play. So if it's not in play, place two threat on the main scheme. So the main scheme goes from two up to four. And then we did the one review and it's going to gain surge in expert mode. So we got Rhino here. So he's a minion. Uh, zero scheme, three attack, eight hit points. And he has steady. Rounds attacks gain overkill and piercing. Okay. So that is going to end same man's turn, I believe. Yeah. So it's back to our turn. All right. Let's see. Let's go ahead and use Avengers Mansion first, so we can draw a card. We got a Swing Web Kit, which is pretty good here. I think we get rid of the Common Criminal. 
and we can just clear no i think i want to just keep the volunteer work on here i don't think we're going to mess with that anymore we gotta to try to gun sandman down we want to knock out rhino here as well uh let's see common criminal after you action spend a physical resource let's do this right right now so physical resource to do three damage to the common criminal so that would defeat it um if this minion is defeated this way choose either draw a card or remove three different sets let's draw a card and we defeated the common criminal Okay, so next we want to defeat Rhino here. And then, but first I want to recur Moon Girl. So Rhino does not have guard. Let's go ahead and have Moon Girl swing for two at Sandman. That'll bring from 14 down to 12. She would take consequence damage and get defeated. Then we're going to use Peter Parker Scientist to generate a mental resource. Uh, and then, actually let's not do that yet. Uh, let's just use this as two resources here. So we're not going to use scientists. Just a double resource to play a suit up. So search your... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. We do want to use it. So we're going to use scientists to generate mental resource. So we can't do that anymore. We're using it now. This would be a second resource. So we can play a suit up. And we want to use the clarity purpose as a resource to play a suit up. Because suit up says search your deck and discard file for an ally and an upgrade that could be uh, attached to the ally, which is a clarity purpose. So we can get the moon girl and clarity purpose back into our hand here. And that will resolve suit up. So we already use our scientists now. Now we're going to use this as a double when paying for a basic card. And the power of all of us will be two mental resources for Moon Girl. Ingenuity is going to be a third mental resource. So we can put Moon Girl back down again. And then draw three with her effect. One, two, three. And then we want to suit up again here. Let's go ahead and use this as a double resource. So we can play suit up again. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I keep on doing the same mistake. We're not going to use it as a double resource. We want to get rid of the clarity of purpose when we use suit up. So clarity of purpose and I like the backflip is a thing. Uh, what should I? And I like the rapid response as well. How do we get down the suit up here? Do we use the backflip as a resource? Let me see if I have this here. No, I, I think. Oh man, I think we're okay overpaying for it and saving the back foot in our hands. No, we need to use a back foot. Okay, so this would be two resources here. Uh, so we can play a second suit up again. And we can search our deck and discover for an ally and upgrade that can be attached to the ally. So we can get the clarity purpose, which is an upgrade that can't be attached to an ally. And we're going to get Ghost Spider as our ally. Add her to our hand and shuffle up our deck here. And that will resolve this second suit up here. All right. So now, can we play everything down? No, we're short one resource, actually. I did not plan that out correctly. That's fine. Let's go ahead and flip over here to hero form. And we're going to use this as three resources when paying for a basic card, because the power novels can be a double. So we can play a ghost spider down here. We only play if we have a web work card. We do have the web of life and destiny here. And let's go ahead and use, I think we saved the rapid response here. So this would be four resources. We're going to overpay for a swing web kick. Eight damage to the enemy. Let's knock out Rhino, who has eight hit points here. So he's going to be defeated. Then let's trigger the city streets here. So exhaust the carry control. We're going to exhaust, uh, let's exhaust Spider-Man, because I want Ghost Spider to actually take consequential damage. So exhausting Spider-Man. Remove, actually at this point, you know what? We're not gonna, we're gonna ignore this. Now. We're just gonna go for the kill. So we're gonna save the rap response in our hand. Ghost Spider, Moon Girl, and Spider-Man will all attack Sandman for one, two, three, four, five, six damage. That'll bring him from 12 down to six. And then our allies will take consequential damage. So Moon Girl takes two, Ghost Spider takes one. That's gonna end our turn. Let's ready back up. And we're gonna draw back up to our hand size of five, keeping the rap response in our hand here. Okay, so we got to enhance fire sense. So Sam and he's going to add one, two, three to the main. So it goes from four up to seven. Actually, I should have thought it. Uh, I didn't plan for that. He's going to attack us here. So sparse sense triggers. We can draw a card. We've gone to a backflip very luckily. So this would be his boost card. Oh, we have the enhanced fire sense. So it's okay if he gets in advance. Uh, we're going to take his attack to the face. And the boost here is one, two, three, four. We're going to put all four indirect damage on Spider Man because he makes indirect damage with Sam's effect. Play a backflip to jump out of way and avoid all that damage. So we don't have to trigger the uh, 
sand blast um, or the surging sands ability because we didn't take any damage from that attack. And then we get a face down encounter card, which is sand form attached to Sandman. When you would do any amount of damage to him, discard a sand form and set, and it resolves the surging sands ability on city streets. Okay, then it's back to our turn. Okay, so we're going to exhaust Avengers Mansion. Let's draw a card here. We got into Spiderman Auto Octavius. Um, unfortunately, I think we do need to thwart. Um, yeah, so the original plan is not going to work. I think we need to control a little bit. So let's go ahead and use this hero action here. Exhaust the character you control. Let's exhaust either Ghost Spider or Spider-Man. Uh, let's, let's use Spider-Man. I want to get Ghost Spider out. So Spider-Man's uh, exhausting. And to remove sand counters from here equal to that character's attack. So two attacks with two sand counters going off. Okay. Then we're going to... Actually, do I want it? I think that's fine. We're going to have Moon Girl store for two from the main scheme. Bring this down a little bit. She'll take consequential damage, get defeated. And then we're going to, I think we flip down here. Now let's flip down to Dr. Eagle. We're going to use Scientist to generate a mental resource. Exhaust Ingenuity to generate a second mental resource so we can play a suit up here. Search your uh, deck and discard pile for an ally and upgrade that can be attached to ally. Add to your hand. Let's look through here for Professor X. Add him to your hand. We're going to shuffle up our deck here and then we're going to look through our discard pile for an upgrade that can be attached to him, which is going to be our Clarity of Purpose. So, Clarity of Purpose here comes back to our hand with the suit up. And that's our third suit up here. So, no more Moon Girl for this uh, deck phase. All right, we want to get Professor X. And then we want to get a rap response out as well. Um, okay, let's use this as three resources so we can play Professor X. Whenever he enters play, choose one. We'll pick the one to confuse the villain. And we're going to use this as two resources so we can play a rap response. It's a two cost upgrade. After an ally you control is defeated, we can discard this card and put the ally into play from discard out and do one damage to it. Professor X will Thor for three from the main, dropping this from five down to two. He will take a consequential damage. And then do we want to resolve Surging Sands? Uh, that's fine. Let's have Ghost Spider swing at Sandman. When you would do any amount of damage to him, discard Sand for him instead and resolve Surging Sands. So place a Sand Counter on here and discard four cards from the encounter deck because there's four Sand Counters. So one, two, three, four. All right, and then Ghost Spider will take a consequential damage for attacking and Sandman does not take any damage from that attack. That is going to end our turn. We're going to ready back up. Draw back up to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it is Sandman's turn. He's going to add a one, two, three to the main. It goes from two up to five here. Sandman's going to scheme, but he's confused. Nothing happens. We get a face on encounter card, which is an assault. It's going to surge in Ultra Eagle. So we get another encounter card. A common criminal, uh, this guy again, and then it's going to surge. So we get another encounter card. Sand clone, X equal to number of sand counters on city streets. So it's currently going to be four attack right now with the three hit points. Then at the end of round, Professor X will lead play. If he's still in play, which he is. All right, let's see here. Um, do we have the kill? I believe we got one more swing web kick left in the deck. Let's check our discard pile real quick. Yeah, we do have the second swing web kick there. We play both 16. Um, we can get Peter's attack up more. Uh, let's let's see. Do these guys have guard? They do not have guard. And then let's check Sandman three. Uh, Sandman three on his third stage has 19 hit points. Uh, one review. We place the sand counter results are insane. Okay, so that doesn't do anything. So I think we just go for the kill here. Ghost Spider attacks. Oh, we need some more damage, though. The Ghost Spider attacks twice. Uh, Peter can kill him on the flip. So we need to play another ally here. Uh, I think we got to play Maria Hill and Ironheart. And I don't know if we'll have the resource after that. Okay, let's go ahead and use Scientist to generate a mental resource. And Exhaust Ingenuity to generate a second mental resource. So we can play Maria Hill. After Mario enters play, each player draws a card. Let's draw a card here. We got a webbed up. Um, okay, let's 
go ahead and go for it. We're going to flip over here to hero form. Um, oh, I realized Ghost Spider can't trigger twice. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to have Ghost Spider swing for two at Sandman. Um, yeah, so that'll bring him from six down to four. And then she will take a consequential damage uh, and get knocked out. Her interrupt here, whenever she leaves play, search your deck for an identity specific event, it adds to your hand, and then we shuffle our deck. So we're going to get our swing web kick here, which is an identity specific event, add it to your hand. And shuffle. Actually, let's check our deck here before we shuffle. We have, oof, okay, we can get Black Cat somehow with the Avengers Mansion. That would be pretty bit, uh, big. Okay, and then whenever a web war at leaves play with the effect of the web of life and destiny, we can draw a card. So after we got the card with a ghost spider, we can now draw a card manually with the web of life and destiny effect. And then we're going to use Avengers Mansion now so we can draw another card. Oh, I forgot, I forgot. before we draw that card, we want to trigger our rapid response. So after an ally control is defeated, discard it in hero form because it's hero response. We get ghost spider into play here and do one damage here with the effect of rapid response. Okay, now we're going to Avengers Mansion draw a card. We did get the black cat here, who's going to net us at least one card. Um, yeah, I think we have the kill here because none of these guys have guard. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this as a double resource so we can play black cat. Force response after you play uh, black cat. Discard top two cards of your deck. So we have three cards here. We're discarding two. And it's both mental resources. Uh, add each printed mental resource card discard to your hand. So we get both these cards to our hand here. And we have the two swing web kicks here as well. Uh, let's go ahead and have Ghost Spider swing for two at Sandman. That'll bring from four down to two. She will take a consequential damage. And then we're going to have Maria Hill swing for one. That'll bring from two down to one. Maria Hill will take a consequential damage. Black Cat's going to swing for one. And that'll bring Sandman from one down to zero. Black Cat does not take consequential damage for attack activations. We have defeated Sandman stage two, so we're going to flip him over to his third stage here, third and final stage. When review, place one sand counter on city streets. So this goes up to five and resolve the surging sand's ability. So we place a counter on here with surging sand. So this goes up to uh, six. And then we discard six cards from top of the encounter deck. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we did that. He has 19 hit points. Let's get him set up here. And then that is it with that. Okay. And then let's see. We play. Yeah. Okay. So Spider Man with the effect of the Warrior Web. So it's a Web War Owl at play. In Ghost Spider, we get plus one attack in the end of phase. So currently, Spider Man has three attack. Let's go ahead and swing for three at Sandman. That'll bring it from 19 to 16. And then we're going to use this as three resources so we can play a swing web kick. And we're going to use this as another three resources so we can play a second swing web kick. And they're going to do eight damage each for a total of 16. And that will bring Sandman from 16 down to zero. Uh, defeating St Sandman and uh, scenario one of the Sinister Motives campaign. And let's make sure I got everything correct here. Um, these guys do not have guard, right? Yeah, so we are able to attack Sandman and we had all of our attacks go through. Um, okay, yeah, we're good. So let's check over here um, with the uh, manual and see what happens for whenever we defeat him. Okay, so for a victory in a reputation track using the conditions section, calculate your group's total reputation value, then mark the number of nodes starting at the topmost unmarked node and then marking each subsequent node going down track. So in the campaign log, uh, if a campaign community service site scheme is individual display, record its title in the community service section. Uh, I believe that we did not get individual display the site scheme here. Um, let me see the ready to rumble. Yeah, the site scheme did not come out, so we didn't get individual display. And then for the expert campaign, only record each identity's remaining hit points. So we're going to record ten for the next scenario. And then I think we had to check here at the very end for the campaign nodes. So plus X is the victory points in the victory display. We have only public outcry here in the victory display. So it's going to be uh, victory one. So one point there. No minions in place plus one. We have minions in place, so we don't get that point. No side scheme in play. We have a side scheme in place, so we don't get that point. No threat on the main scheme. We do have threat on the main scheme, so we don't get that point. And then fewer than one times player acceleration tokens in play. There is one, so we don't get that point. 
and then uh, plus one point for no defeat identities. So we are still alive here. So we have the plus point, one point from no defeat identities and plus one for the uh, victory point in a victory display. So we get two points here. So we go up two nodes. Um, and then I believe for the next one, we can do three campaign shoot tech upgrades at random to a player. And then that player does this thing. And then we choose an Osborne tech attachment at random. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, let's see. So these are our shoe tech that I was talking about earlier. So we go up three. So we have the star here. And then that player may choose one uh, to add to your deck for the rest of the campaign. Then record that card's title in their shoe tech in a campaign log and return the other cards to the collection. Uh, okay, so here are all the shoe cards. We're going to try to shuffle this up kind of randomly and just not really look at it. So we're going to grab the top three cards. And the top three cards here are going to be the three... Uh, random ones, and then we can choose one to add to our deck for the rest of this campaign. Okay, let's stop the shuffle here. So top three cards are gonna be these three. So we can either pick the Wrist Navigator, uh, which says after a minion or side team enters play, attach Wrist Navigator to it. And then uh, when the attached cards are defeated, we can draw a card. Okay, that's pretty useful. Or we can get the Combat Darts. A uh, hero response, every hero attacks, remove one dark counter from here, do one damage to an enemy. And then spend one resource of any type to place three dark counters on here. We also got um, Propulsion Gauntlet. Here, action exhaust this card and take two inner damage to ready up your hero. Um, ooh, the ready could be useful. I don't think we need it for this deck, though. So I think we're going to pick either the Compact Darts or the Wrist Navigator. Do we want to draw a card when defeating a... Oh, it's a Force Response. We have to trigger it. I think I'm going to go for the Compact Darts here because it's not a Force Response, so I have more... Um, Flexibility. So we're going to add the compact darts to a Peter Parker Spider-Man here for the rest of the campaign, and it does come out with a setup. And it's a permanent card here, Shoe Tech, and we can choose one Osborne Tech attachment at random. Record its name in the Osborne Tech set section of the campaign log. So where are our Osborne Techs here? We have these right here, um, and then we're going to choose one at random. Record the name of it in the campaign log. Okay, so we have six. So we're going to roll the dice, and we get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be that one. So let's see what we got. Oh, came out. Okay, so we got a 4. So it's going to be the arm cannon here, the fourth one. So this one says Surge, attach to a villain. Attach a uh, villain's attacks, gain overkill, and piercing. As here, actually, we can discard the highest cost upgrade we control to discard this card. That's pretty nasty. Uh, choose one Osborne tech at random, and it records name in the Osborne tech. Okay, so this would be shuffled into uh, the next... Uh, shuffle each recorded Osborne text section of the campaign into the encounter deck. So that's going to be shuffled into our next scenario here as a part of the setup. And let's see, yeah, I, I believe that's all we get right now. So, yeah, that is it. Okay, cool. So, we're uh, for the next scenario against Venom, we're going to be having uh, 10 hit points. We're going to have the combat darts um, for Peter Parker Spider Man. And then uh, we're also going to have the arm cannon um, in Venom's encounter deck there. So, yeah. Uh, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay, and I'll see you guys in the next one against scenario number two against uh, Venom.